do-it-yourself swimming pool winterizing or closing for the winter season. Is this a good idea or should a pool owner close and winterize their own pool? I don't have a problem with this. This is going to come down to your technical proficiency with the process uh, along with, you know, how difficult is it to winterize this specific pool? And some are easier than others, to be sure. And a, a professional closing and winterizing crew certainly can make the job look easy. I mean, it's well less than an hour to come in and just drain the pool and winterize it and uh, winterize the equipment, get everything done. It takes minutes, literally, for an experienced crew. So it looks like an easy process, and you think maybe you're going to take care of it yourself. The problem is, is if you make a mistake in the winterizing process, there's it it, it the the punishment is very severe for a mistake. That's a good way to put it. A small error with the way that you winterize your skimmer, and you might be looking at three thousand dollars or more to replace your skimmer come the next year. And so that's why I have always approached this question from the logic that. Look at your cost for the pool on an annual basis. And if you were to open the pool in the spring yourself, you could save approximately half of the money for the maintenance of closing and opening. This allows you to hire a professional service crew to close and winterize your pool and take on the, you know, the bulk aspect of liability for a problem with the winterizing or a failure over the, the winter season. It's not kind of a get out of jail free card in the sense that they won't necessarily assume all damages. Um, but at least you'll kind of have a leg to stand on if you hire, you know, a large brick and mortar company that closes hundreds or even thousands of pools a year. I mean, they're probably pretty good at it and they should stand behind their work. And that's kind of a benefit to the pool owner. And again, you can still save half of the money by opening the pool in the springtime yourself, which is largely a labor process versus more of a technical process for closing and winterizing. So let's talk about that a little bit more. The first step for closing and winterizing most pools is to drain the pool at least below the skimmer or often below the return ports uh, to facilitate blowing out all of the water. Some pools you can't do that process with. Like let's say you have a fiberglass pool and you live in an area with a very high water table. Well, I wouldn't want to drain that pool at all, not even a little bit. And so that's a very serious consideration. Do you know anything about the history of the pool or the normal winterizing process or the water tables in your area? Because I would want to know this information before I endeavored to close and winterize a pool myself. And that's kind of another advantage of hiring the local service professional. They close and winterize so many pools in your area. They've got a pretty good sense for you know, is the is the pool at high risk for problems? You know, I'll give an example here. You have a vinyl liner pool. You start to drain it so that you can winterize it. And you notice as you're draining it, wrinkles start to develop. So that to me tells me that you have a high water table and you need the weight of the water in the pool to displace the water underneath the liner. So that's another example of like, you probably shouldn't drain this, or if you do drain it, you have to drain it minimally. Um, and that's something that a pool owner might not know or notice. And so that's a consideration as well. Like, how hard is this pool to drain? Is there a concern that the you could end up with wrinkles in a liner or with a fiberglass or concrete pool? Potentially, they can pop right out of the ground. So again, the you know it's a pretty it's pretty severe consequences for doing it wrong or if you have a problem. Um, let, and let's talk about the pool itself. Some pools are very easy to winterize because they have one pipe or two pipes, um, three pipes at most. You know, those ones are the, the easy ones to do. What if you have an in-floor cleaning system and 25 plus pipes to winterize? That sounds like a great deal to hire a service crew to come in and take care of that because there's so many steps involved. And if you miss something, again, the costs and the punishment are very severe. Or what if, what if you have a, an attached hot tub? You know, and that's a very serious concern as well because the the jet lines for a hot tub are kind of notoriously hard to winterize, and you're again you're going to be taking on that liability, and you don't want to have a leak in the jet line of your hot tub uh, that's attached to your swimming pool, certainly. So, uh, again, how technically challenging is this pool going to be, and just you know how far are you willing to go to save 
what is it going to be? $300, perhaps? That seems to be an average price for a pool closing and winterizing service. So, you know, again, perhaps you want to consider you take care of the opening service, allow a service professional to close the pool, especially if you have a more complicated one. Uh, further to that, let's talk about the cover. So there's a lot of different kinds of cover that you could have. Most of them are pretty easy to handle. There's a couple that are kind of a pain, and those would be solid safety covers. Those are those can be a pain. They're heavy, and they tend to sink as you're putting them on. You need probably two people to install them, and it would be helpful if you know what you're doing. Uh, lock-in covers, they're not that common anymore, but they lock into a track similar to how a vinyl liner locks into a track. And they can be really challenging. We used to joke about those as uh, th those causing a lot of divorces with people who are trying to, you know, install their own pool cover with a husband and wife team because those locking covers can be a real pain. So what kind of cover do you have? Tarp and water bag? That's pretty easy to do. Or a light duty mesh safety cover? Also pretty easy. Solid cover or lock-in cover? Again, you're getting a lot of value for your money for that $300 closing and winterizing process. So again, it comes down to how, how technically proficient you are. Do you have the right tools to do the job? How complicated is the pool? Like for the tools for the job, do you have a leaf blower or, you know, perhaps a shop vac and that's what you're thinking you're going to blow out and winterize the pipes with? Perhaps you could on some pools, but on the average in-ground swimming pool, that's not going to be enough uh, pressure to blow out the lines properly or to my satisfaction. It, professionally, we use three horsepower blower motors to blow out uh, the lines for swimming pools. And I would consider that to be like the minimum barrier to entry. If you want to close and winterize your own pool, like you should make that investment into that three horsepower blow, blower motor that we all use. It's probably the same price as a closing and winterizing service. So maybe if you're going to try to go your own way and, and you think that your pool seems reasonable that you should be able to close and winterize it yourself, it's not too complicated, go ahead and buy the right equipment to, to do the job right because you're taking on a lot of liability here and you want to make sure that you do it properly. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.